Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some test type problems. These are going to be smaller problems. They could be in a multiple choice format. They're going to be smaller in length and we're usually going to have to kind of back into some numbers and maybe put them in a different order. It's a good test of knowledge, but it kind of could sometimes be in, in a reverse order and have less information than we may have in longer problems. So here we go. Our company's prime costs are $40,518,000. And its conversion costs five million five hundred twenty. Uh, if direct materials are two million twenty-two, calculate the overhead. So let's give what we have here, and and then try to determine the missing component, being of course in this case overhead. So what they gave us is prime costs. So we can say, okay, well, prime costs. How do we calculate prime costs? Prime costs consist of direct material, direct labor. Those are the things that are are. Um, prime to the convert to the production process and then we're going to have a total here so that's that's the information that they could give us for prime costs what did they give us they gave us the total so they gave us the ending number so again we're going to have to kind of back in to one of the others direct material direct labor most likely so we're going to say four four million five one eight thousand and conversion costs so they did the same for the conversion so conversion costs so we can think about okay what is, what's involved in a conversion costs well those are the things that change the, the raw materials to the end product so that's direct uh direct labor the labor is a conversion type cost and overhead all those other types of things that we have to include like depreciation on the factory and the stuff all the stuff on the factory basically that we can't apply directly to uh, a certain pro a project so we're going to say that is the total then for the conversion will be those two and they gave us once again they gave us the total for the conversion cost so we're gonna have to probably back into one of the other two numbers of course that number being what we're looking for here we can highlight it overhead that's what we're looking for so we have the total for the conversion five million five twenty thousand and then they gave us the direct materials so that's the direct materials over here so the direct materials they gave us as part of a prime cost two million 22,000 and of course uh, what we're looking for is the direct labor because if we find the direct labor that is part of both the prime cost and the conversion cost and that will then allow us to figure out what the overhead is so we have the direct materials plus the X plus a uh, direct labor uh, is equal to the total so we got to figure out what that is. you can write that out algebraically you can say uh, the the direct materials plus x would equal the total or if you have it in this format you can see okay well it's going to be it's got to be a subtraction problem because it's got to be this number minus this number would mean that these two numbers add up to this number so let's plug that in and then test the theory we can say well this has got to be equal to the 4 million 518 minus the 2 million 22 and therefore the 2 million 22 plus the 2 million 496 will add up to the 4,518. So all we did was a subtraction problem, obviously, uh, to figure out what the direct labor we had to back into it. So 2022 minus the 4,518. That means that uh, we needed this to be 2,496 so that then if we test it, 2022 plus, of course, the 2,496 is that 4,518. So now we know what this number is. This number is direct labor, that number. And now we need to do the same thing for overhead. Well, if this number plus this number is that, then this number would have to be the total minus the direct labor. So if we did that in a formula, it would equal the total, point to the total, minus the direct labor. So again, it would just be a math uh, problem here we could write it out algebraically or we can just kind of see that it's going to be it's got to be the 552 minus whoop i'm missing a zero or something 55200 minus the 2496 and that means that that gives us the overhead and then if we test it it's the 2496 plus the 3024 and that gives us this number here so our answer then is going to be this overhead number right there next one says calculate the cost of goods sold for the period so we're talking about a manufacturing company but it's very similar to the cost of goods sold that we would have for a merchandising company 
and we're just we're going to um, calculate cost of goods sold by stating that we're going to start off with the beginning balance in this case in finished inventory so we need to find what's what started out in finished goods inventory and so if we look through our information here we got the beginnings raw material now that's raw material the the raw materials now beginning work in process ending work in process beginning finished goods inventory that's what we had at the beginning of the period that is there available to sell so we're going to say this is the beginning finished goods inventory and then normally in a merchandiser we would add purchases to that we would say okay we're going to add the purchasing to that but in this case we actually produced the stuff so we're not going to call it purchases we're going to call it cost of goods uh, manufactured for the period very long uh, thing there but we're gonna say I'll just pull that over there so we can see it all and I'm gonna indent this back or let's format this like that that still won't do it okay anyways we're gonna pick up that number and that's gonna be the amount that we produce because we make the thing so we didn't just buy the inventory what increased the finished goods inventory it, it increased by what we made it increased by uh, the goods that we manufactured and of course we get this number from the calculation of goods that we have manufactured which we're going to use some of this other data we would have to in order to get that number but this problem just jumped to the cost of goods manufactured so we're going to pick up that number that's what it's going to increase by and then we have to say like less ending finished goods now, i know i'm not spelling this great i'm just trotting this down but then, now we have the ending finished goods so again beginning raw materials not raw materials uh, no uh, beginning work in process we're not we're only talking about the finished goods in this case when we're talking about the cost of goods sold calculation ending work in process beginning finished good uh ending finished goods inventory that's what's still in the finished goods inventory all the other stuff is not in the cost of goods calculation because we can't yet sell it it's still in the inventory processing at some form so we're going to say less this one so i usually put it in there as a positive number and then when we do the calculation the calculation being the cost of goods sold it's going to equal the beginning number in our finished goods plus the stuff that we made and have then put into the finished goods less minus the 68.2 it's going to be less less and i'm putting less over here so that you could see that it's going to be less in words otherwise you, you know you can put a minus sign here but of course if we did that with a calculator all we're saying it's the 72 2 plus the cost of goods that we manufactured 246 2 minus the 68 2 ending inventory and that's how we would kind of uh, put that calculation together next one says we got this information and i'm going to look at the bottom number here to see what we want to do and it says we're going to use the above information total fact uh, total factory overhead cost will be so what will total factory overhead costs be so obviously with this information we have to determine if it's part of factory overhead so we're looking at for factory overhead what cost will be included there and i'm going to say green if it is and and not green and yellow if it isn't so direct materials now the determining factor if it's going to go into factory factory overhead is basically can we apply it to a job or directly to a job or a process if we can then we don't need to put it in the factory overhead we're just going to apply it to that job or process if we cannot apply it but it's still part of the production process then we got to dump it into the factory overhead that's kind of like the bucket we have to dump it into so now we have direct materials can we apply direct materials to a particular job if we had like a job cost system yeah we can we made guitars we know exactly which job they go to we don't have to dump that into the factory overhead so that's not going to be part of factory overhead indirect materials indirect materials being like if we made guitars like glue or something uh it's part of the guitar but we're not gonna really want to add it up and apply it out it would cost too much to figure that out so we would probably just dump that it's part of the guitar we're gonna dump that into overhead and figure out some easy way to allocate it because it would be too costly for us to allocate it uh, directly so therefore we're gonna say all right we'll put that into the bucket and then we have indirect labor so indirect labor is indicating that it is part of the production process but it's not the main people that work on a particular thing so if we talked about like construction jobs we're not talking about 
the laborer that we know is on directly working on a particular house or something like that. We know that that one is applied to that house. But it might be someone that goes from from place to place, either supervises different houses and we don't know exactly how to, or some other type of workers that go there and, uh, you know, maybe clean up certain places, whatnot. And those, it might not be as easy for us to allocate to a particular job, too costly to do so. So we might just say, ah, you know, that's going to go into the bucket and we're going to put that into our overhead and just allocate it. We still need to allocate it to inventory, to the jobs, but uh, we're not going to do it uh, directly because it costs too much. We're just going to put it in the overhead bucket and then uh, allocate it in some other way. Factory depreciation. So if we make things in a factory, if we like make guitars in a factory, then the depreciation on the factory is part of the guitar. We need to put it into the price of the guitar, into the cost of the production, but again, we can't really apply it directly to any guitar because they may all be different uh, time periods that the different guitars took to make. So uh, we don't know exactly how to apply that out. So that's going to go into our bucket here. We're going to say that that goes into our, our bucket. It's part of the production process. However, uh, we don't know exactly where, which job it should go to. And then we've got direct labor. So like if we're talking about a construction jobs and we're trying to find one job compared to the next job, well, the, the people that work directly on, if we're building like houses, the, you know, we know which house the one person's working on, hopefully, you know, they, we can pretty much, we can do that pretty easily. That's a main piece of the component of the assets that we're making. We want to apply that directly to the job. We don't need to dump it in the factory overhead and then allocate it in a separate way. So that means that the sum of the factory overhead, given this information, is going to be the 3, 8, the 8, 3, plus the 12, 6, 4, total 24, 7. Next one, same idea, a few different numbers. We have the uh, accumulated the following account information, and we're going to skip down to the bottom and say, well, using the above information, total factory overhead cost would be what? So we got factory overhead, once again, is what we are looking for. That's what we're going to list out. We're going to see the determining factor is that it's part of the uh, inventory that we are making in a manufacturing process. However, we cannot apply it to a particular job or process, depending on if we're in a job cost process or a process costing system. So we have the beginning raw materials inventory. So, you know, that's talking about raw materials. Raw materials are usually things that we can apply directly to the job or process, and therefore it's not going to be dumped into the overhead. It's going to be applied directly out. So then we have indirect material costs. Indirect usually implies that we don't know exactly where <laughs> where to apply them. And, and again, if we're talking about indirect materials, it could be things like if we have construction jobs like grout or something like that. We, we, we're going to use it on different jobs, but it would cost too much for us to kind of think about how to exactly apply out maybe. And it might be not cost effective to do that. It might be, well, we know it's part of the job. We know those costs need to be allocated to the job. But... We're going to dump it into overhead and allocate them to them those jobs in a different way. So we're going to put that down here. I'm going to say, okay, the indirect materials. Well, I'm going to do it the other way. If it's not in there, I'm going to make it yellow. That means it's not in. And then if it is in, we're going to make it green. That's how we're going to do it. So green means it's part of overhead. Okay, then we got indirect labor. Same thing. It says indirect. So if we think about making things in a factory, like if we make guitars in the factory... The people that actually are working and carving out guitars, if, if that's how we did it, we're making hand guitar by hand here. And so if we carved them out, then obviously those would be direct labors. People that uh, are, are kind of cleaning up the shop or even the supervisors that work from job to job, we don't know exactly where what they are a part of, which guitar, but, uh, and, and we don't know if the supervisor, maybe the supervisors, you know, supervising a lot of jobs and we, therefore we have to apply it to the job. It's part of the cost of guitar, but we don't know exactly where uh, it should go. So we have to put it into this bucket again. We got to put it into the bucket for indirect labor, and that's going to be the 5-4. And then we have the uh, maintenance of factory equipment. So the factory equipment, anything that says factory, is probably going to be having to include in the equipment in some way so it's part of the factory because we need we need the factory in order to make the stuff that we're making and there but we don't know um exactly what job to put the the equipment on so if we have 
you know, a lay in a, in a construction area, we may not be able to allocate the time, um, to each in, to each process job in order to allocate that cost. Therefore, it might be cost effective for us to say, okay, we're just going to take that cost. We're going to dump it in the overhead and we'll allocate it to the job in some other way by that allocation process. All right. And then we have the same for, uh, well, I'm going to say duh, duh, that's going to be part. And then we've got the direct labor. Now, those are the guys that work directly on something. Like if you talk about different construction jobs and we have different construction jobs, we have different jobs of different sizes of like houses or something that we're making, then uh, we know we should track pretty closely where those guys are, where those guys and gals are in terms of the construction job. And that will be direct. So that will be worth our time usually for us to say, OK, that cost needs to be applied exactly to that job. And therefore, it's not going to be part of overhead. It's going to be applied directly to the job so we're going to say all right that is that and then the total then would be the sum of the two four plus the five four plus the three two and that will give us the eleven thousand the eleven thousand being the answer the amount in the factory overhead according to this data